throwbacks, color rush, whatever you want to call this. These are the most tragic uniforms in NFL history. What up, everybody? I'm Colleen Wolf, and this is NFL Follies. So NFL uniforms have come a long way since professional football's inception, but for every classic or fresh new stunner, there are some absolute bombs. Uh, I'm, I'm speechless. No, that was terrible. We gotta do better than that now. And listen, we're going through all of the teams, so hold your applause or your anger until the very end. All right, let's go. In 2009, it was a super limited edition Lime Time in Seattle. The Seahawks wore these monsters once and then retired them forever. And no, these aren't even color rush. We'll get to those a little bit later. Carson Wentz in the roller derby new commander outfit thingy. It's the best I can do to describe it. The first black uniforms in franchise history and Carson Wentz called them sharp? No, no one believes that. Not even Carson Wentz. Big Blue opting for a big red moment. One that couldn't end soon enough. I guess the Giants decided everyone should just wear non-contact jerseys. This is our chance to turn around right now. I respect the strategy, but the Giants retired these eyesores after going one and three in them. Could you finish your career with another team? I would look so different and probably so stank in any other uniform. I'm with Emmett on this because every time I see him in red and white, my brain just breaks. But if we're talking worst unis, it's these 1994 children's soccer jerseys. From 2002 to 2010, the Bills wore these Identity Crisis Edition jerseys. That doesn't look good. So it's true what they say, look bad, play bad. But hey, things are looking good now. What a day, what a day. Love it. This league has been around for over 100 years, so there's a lot of history to celebrate. Sometimes history is beautiful, like the Chargers powder blues or the Eagles Kelly green. But sometimes history is super busted. So let's talk throwbacks. A storied franchise like the Bears has a ton to choose from, but the time they honored their first ever uniform from 1920 by dressing up in what appears to be costumes from the movie Any Given Sunday was probably their worst. Excuse me, the worst. That oldie but a hoodie. Let's do it. There they are. Well, I, love they wear. I, I would wear those. These are throwouts. And look not good in this. Oh, Denver. Brown and yellow should be a crime. Let's all hope these Brock atrocities never return again. They were so unpopular, fans burned them in 1962. Good I'm call. not kidding. And the bonus I didn't know I needed a referee barbershop quartet. What a day to be at Mile High. The Packers green and gold is so iconic that every time they put on throwbacks, it just seems like something ain't right. This is an instance where less is more just doesn't work at all. If I must speak ill of the Eagles, I guess I'll go with their 1934 throwbacks where their helmets kind of look like a failed art project. I hope they throw them back in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, did you know the original colors worn by the Eagles were inspired by the colors of the Swedish national flag? Did you know that? High school, yeah, that's what it is, high school. With the fake Michigan helmets. Just an awful day to be a Philadelphia Eagle, awful. Hey, whoa, not so fast, buddy. Philly won that game, 56 to 21, and then shot those jerseys into the sun. So that was a fine day to be an Eagle. Remember the Titans, baby. We the real Titans, you know what I'm saying? We the real Titans. The Jets honored the AFL's New York Titans by wearing these Titanic disasters. Gang green, just stick with green. The Saints unis always rank among the best, but these throwback yellow pants just don't hit like the golds. No, Mike, they really don't. In 2014, the Steelers buzzed around in these iconically bad B jerseys for a game, but these get-ups from 1994, which were a throwback to 1933, are giving serious Knights of the Roundtable vibes. For a franchise that's had the same uniform since Super Bowl I, it's hard to pick a loser, but rocking the state of Texas on your helmet is less than ideal. The Raiders don't really have a bad jersey either, so if I'm being really picky, I'm gonna go with this throwback logo they wore in 2009. Add Jamarcus Russell under the helmet, and we've got a winner. 
So the current Falcons jerseys are a little too modern for my taste. The ombre gradient is just not working for me, but I gotta go with these. There's the awkward white stripe on the sleeve, and then those numbers you just can't escape. Not those little ones on the shoulder, these ones. You just can't see that jersey and think of anything other than disappointment. Gold and purple works like magic for LSU, the Lakers, and the Vikings, but not so much for the 2015 Ravens. It definitely doesn't help that they're going up against the crisp Chiefs white on white in this matchup either. The Bengals got us all excited about the white helmets this year, but they have a history of questionable wardrobe decisions, like that time they dressed up as the Cleveland Browns from 1968 to 1980. Speaking of, remember when the Browns had their team name stretched down their pant leg? Well, the first team to ever do it uh, should definitely be the last. Tough to knock unis from a Super Bowl year, but those stars were even too big for primetime. Just because it's a popular trend doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. Not every team needs a black alternate jersey, although that hasn't stopped current Lion Amon Ra St. Brown from chasing his black uni dream. Do you, Amon Ra? The Texans debuted their battle red helmets this year. A lot of people had opinions about it. Are you one of them? You can leave a comment in the section. If not, we'll just keep it moving. But once upon a time, the Texans went a little too red, like Kool-Aid Man red. I think Peyton Manning's face says it all. Coincidence he signed with the Broncos the next season? <laughs> I think not. That's scary. You might want to turn down the brightness on your screen. It's about to get real loud with color in here. It's what you've all been waiting for, Color Rush. And it should be noted that in the first ever Color Rush game between the Jets and Bills, they went all red versus all green. But for those with color blindness, it didn't look so great but you live and you learn. These overwhelmingly blue Panthers unis are not their best, but to be fair, Cam Newton can make anything look good. Um, a lack of execution. The Color Rush orange creamsicles might not be so bad if they weren't completely ripping off their fellow Floridians in Tampa. They wore them once, lost, and were never to be seen again. Don't adjust your TV sets. Those are the alternative uniforms of the San Francisco 49ers. Black and red, player and fan inspired. Something about seeing the Niners in black just doesn't add up. Like their record in the years they wore them when they went 13 and 35. In one of the first color rush games ever, the Titans, they made some decisions. And not all decisions are good ones. But they won the game, and their unis were completely overshadowed by their opponents. Which brings us to Jacksonville. Love them or hate them, the Jaguars 2015 color rush mustards are iconic. But when your own quarterback says, I think these are ugly as hell, it ain't good. Two-tone. Helmet, little black in the front, little gold in the back. <laughs> um, those helmets were terrible. They were just as bad as the Buccaneers' digital numbers. Well, thanks for the setup, Kyle. When the Buccaneers debuted these jerseys, they said it was a culmination of two years of research. Two years in the lab to create digital alarm clock jersey numbers? Look, everyone has trouble figuring out who they are when they get to Hollywood, and the Rams, they were no different when they moved back from St. Louis. It's the white Ram horns that do it for me. Let's just be happy they finally found themselves. We were champions! With so many amazing Chargers uniforms to choose from, it was just such a bummer to see Rivers, Tomlinson, and Gates look so blah in navy blue. Boltman must have been so sad. Hey, just in case you can't see the giant logo on our helmet, how about we put even bigger logos on our shoulders? Great idea! The Vikings all purple combo, the pants, the jerseys, the helmets, was dubbed primetime purple. But just because you have a cool nickname doesn't mean you actually look cool. 
That's it, every team's worst uniform. Look, tell me what I missed, what I was wrong about. I know you will, you always do. And look, I'm not a hater. This was the assignment that I was given. And we've all made some questionable fashion decisions at one point. Look, I'd like to say that was cool, but it wasn't. Anyway, see you next time.